I'm Anjali Kimwani, and I am here to speak with a special guest, CEO of Moderna, Stefan Bansell, about all things COVID and the vaccine, as well as more tied to the JPM annual health conference. Stefan, thanks again for joining us today. It's been a while since we spoke, but we clearly have a lot of catching up to do. Omicron is now here and has completely ruined our plans to have this chat in person. Uh, so let's talk about that first. The vaccine, right now we're looking at sort of starting the discussions of a fourth dose here in the US, but I know that you have been focused on an Omicron specific uh, booster as well. Talk to me about what you're thinking in terms of how we need to continue fighting this virus. Well, good morning and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I will start by saying first, let's look at the short term. I think we need to make sure as many people uh, can get the booster as possible. As you know, through real world evidence, there's very strong data coming, including from the UK, showing that people who got free Moderna doses are extremely well protected against uh, the Omicron variants. Uh, we see very high uh, efficacy against infection person to person uh, in the short term. Uh, and we see a uh, very strong protection against hospitalization and deaths. Actually, just Singapore just came out with very interesting data showing Moderna is the best weapon to protect against deaths against uh, any of the vaccines. So that's for where we are today. So people who don't have a booster, please go get your booster. If you know people not vaccinated, please make sure they get vaccinated. So as we look forward, uh, we need to be ready for whatever evolution gives us. Um, and so we are working on, on a lot of different boosters in the clinic as we speak. We should get the Omicron-specific booster in the clinic in the coming weeks, but we also have an alpha and a beta and a delta uh, booster in the clinic. And we're also going to look at combinations and discussing with public health leaders like in the US, UK, Europe, and around the world to figure out what product do they want to be ready for the fall of 2022. You know, we're very blessed that in 21. You know, we just announced we shipped 807 million doses. 25% of those doses went to low-income and middle-income country, which is wonderful. And uh, that translates into around $17.5 billion of sales for 21. One of the things we did this morning is actually increase our expectations for sales for 22. On, on November 4th, quarterly call, we had said we had already signed co contracts with down payments for $17 billion for 2022. And we had options for up to $3 billion. This morning, we are uh, upgrading those numbers. Uh, what we have now is signed APAs for $18.5 billion. Recently, the UK and Switzerland and South Korea placed large orders for fall of 2022. And the options have now gone up to $3.5 billion. But what is important to know is there are still a lot of discussions ongoing for the fall of 2022. And the numbers I gave is very heavily tilted toward the first half of the year. So uh, many more discussions to come as governments get ready for 22. And already some countries have already signed orders for 23, like the UK and Taiwan, who wants to make sure uh, they get this, uh, secure the supply. Absolutely. And this definitely falls in line with what you've told us repeatedly, which is that 2022 was really where you're going to see that ramp up of supply. And I'm glad you brought up the low and middle income countries because I feel like that's something that we haven't quite addressed as much. The, there have been discussions about either vaccine hesitancy on the ground or the, the uh, inability to absorb specifically mRNA vaccines. What has been your experience and, and what do you think Moderna can do to really help improve the situation? As we've seen, there still is a need to vaccinate the world? Sure. So if you look at vaccinating low-income countries, there's two pieces of the problem. There's the supply of vaccines, and then there's the ability to get doses in arms. So the supply of vaccine clearly in the first half to maybe up to September of 2021, there was a supply issue. You know, every country wanted vaccine to protect their people, and there was not enough supply for the planet. But this has changed drastically. In the fall, we really saw a total switch going from undersupply to oversupply of vaccines, including for low-income countries. You know, in November, for example, in any given day of the week, we had between 50 and 100 million doses sitting in a warehouse waiting to be shipped to low-income countries via uh, COVAX. And we announced this morning in our press release that the African Union has announced to us last week that they do not want their Q2 reservation, which was for 60 million doses, 
they do not need it. They informed us that between the COVAX uh, supply, the Chinese donation, the US government donation, the EU donations, they have more vaccine than they need to get them in arms. But the challenge they have is getting them in arms. They don't have enough nurses, doctors, vaccination centers. As you know, transportation is an issue for people that are in remote areas. So I think we need to do much more as a world to help for the last mile, getting doses in arms. It is not anymore a problem of doses. Uh, if you look at what the industry has done, it is really remarkable. Uh, we are now moving to a situation where we have more doses available than people wanting vaccines, which is a great place to be. And the mRNA vaccines are really showing their difference for real world evidence. You know, again, you know, Singapore last week showed that the vaccine that best protect against death is the Moderna vaccine. And if you look at right. the high income country, it's mostly an mRNA market. Right, absolutely. And, and to that point, you're also setting the stage for more absorption of mRNA products with the buildup that you've created now of mRNA manufacturing. So on that point, talk to us about what's what the outlook is, especially for 22 for Moderna. Uh, beyond the COVID vaccine, you, you do have a, a number of other things in the pipeline. Do we see more of that come out? Because it seems like that's something that, you know, specifically for, for a company like Moderna that investors would be really interested in. Sure. I mean, I always remind people that while the COVID-19 vaccine is very important for the pandemic, it's very important in terms of sales, you know, 17.5 billion last year, as I said, uh, already 18.5 signed for this year, plus the option, plus more discussions ongoing. It's a very important product, no doubt. But mRNA is an information molecule. Moderna has built a platform for 10 years with we a capital constraint. Well, we finished 2021 with $17 billion of cash. And so if you think about it, we announced this morning that in terms of investment, for example, you know, we invested in 2019 pre-pandemic $500 million in R&D. Well, guess what? This year, our plan is to invest 2.5 to $3 billion. That's five to six X more investment. And we have now 40 programs in development. And there are many more in the labs that are gonna move into development from the labs. In CapEx, you know, we invested less than $100 million in 2019. Well, this year, we're going to invest around $800 million. So it's kind of you know, over 8x increase in capital investment, a plant in Canada, a plant in Australia, a plant in Africa, more investment in the US. And so people, I think, don't appreciate where Moderna is going. We have a platform in this industry. There's never been a platform. You know, uh, as you follow the field, you know, when you have a company getting one product to market, everybody's crashing their heads, okay, what's the next product? Well, Moderna has 40, 40 in development. Very excited about flu, flu combining with COVID, one single dose a year, you get your COVID booster, adapted to the variant of a year, you get your flu booster, adapted to also the strain of flu of that year. And then we'll keep adding components. There are around 10 uh, viruses that cause hospitalization because of, of infecting people in their respiratory system. And we want just to stop that. We believe the world deserves a single annual shot that protects you against those 10 viruses so people don't get sick, don't get hospitalized, and don't die of respiratory virus. We are, you know, in 2022, people should not be dying of respiratory viruses. The technology exists, and Moderna will not stop until we have that broad protection for people all around the world. Sounds good. Well, we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. And hopefully what you've uh, been able to build up through the pandemic for manufacturing plays a role in how we see the world absorb that. We'll have to leave it there for now. But thank you again for joining us. Stefan Bensel, CEO of Moderna. Really a pleasure to have you on again. Thank you.